because Steve Ratner, uh, they basically understand they're out of money. They come up with a, a plan to keep the federal government open that blows a hole in the federal deficit. Uh, of course, a couple of weeks before that, they pass a tax cut that blows a up to $2 trillion hole in the federal deficit, uh, the, the, the national debt, which of course may be spooking Wall Street right now. Uh, and now they come up with a 10 year, they come up with a budget plan where they finally stop pretending that they even care about balancing budgets because they've given up on that ghost. They're not going to balance a budget in five years. They say they're not going to balance a budget in 10 years. They're never going to balance the budget. And, and this budget plan, it says as much. T t take us through the numbers. You're absolutely right, Joe. So when you look at the numbers for what's actually happening, and by the way, Trump's official budgets like the one today exist in some parallel universe that is never going to happen and bear no relation to reality. But if you look at the reality, they inherited a budget deficit of about $600 billion, and then they've layered on top of that uh, tax cuts and spending increases that in 2019 are going to take this budget back over a trillion dollars to $1.15 trillion. First time it's been over a trillion dollars since the Obama uh, financial crisis efforts to restore the economy. And then it just goes straight up from there. And if you assume that the tax cuts are extended, that the spending increases are extended, all of which I think are frankly the right assumptions, by the time you get to 2027, instead of the balanced budget that Trump predicted literally a year ago, you have a $2.1 trillion deficit. All right, all right. Let, let, let me stop you there, Steve Ratner. So just to put this into perspective, so Republicans were attacking Bill Clinton for having a $300 billion deficit. You're telling me that Donald Trump and the Republican Party's uh, uh, budget and, and, and all the, the policies that they've put in place will lead us to a, an annual $2 trillion deficit? A $2 trillion deficit and $35 oh, trillion dollars of total debt when you go out 10 years. As you can see on this next chart, we are now at about 75 or 76% debt to GDP. This is the critical measure of the health of our debt levels relative to our economy. It would have gone to 91% if Trump had done nothing. When you layer in the spending, uh, the tax uh, cuts and the spending increases, it goes to 99. When you assume that all those are extended for the full life of them, which again is the way Washington work, it's always extended, you get to 109%. And by the way, at the end of World War II, when we were rebuilding the U.S., we were re <coughs> rebuilding Europe, it got to 103% very briefly, it came right back down again. This would be by far the highest debt to GDP ratio that we've ever seen. And as you know, the yeah. credit markets, the bond markets in particular, in the last week or so since they I don't think anybody expected Congress would behave so irresponsibly the bond markets have backed up and you can see what's happened to the 10-year Treasury rate which was sitting down at around 2.35 percent for a long time moving around very calmly and suddenly took off and is now at about 2.85 percent and actually as we sit here this morning at 2.9 percent and this will eventually could eventually undo the stock market because the stock market relates very heavily to high reacts very badly to higher interest rates right and, and at some point uh, Richard Haas China uh, and other countries that buy our debt are just going to stop buying it at low interest rates. They're going to say, wait, there's too much of a risk here. You guys are actually projecting $2 trillion a year deficits in one year, which, by the way, is more debt than this country built up over its first 200 years. At some point, they just say, you're going to have to raise your interest rates if we're going to be buying uh, American dollars. You've talked about this in your books. You've talked about it in speeches. Please talk about how this undermines America's national security in the coming years. Well, it's one thing to have to raise interest rates to cool an overeated economy, and we're at that point, but now we're also going to have to raise interest rates in order to attract the kind of financing uh, we want. This is, uh, yeah, it's going to slow American economic growth, so it's going to be a vicious uh, cycle that we're setting ourselves in. It's also going to squeeze out investment. You were just talking about infrastructure. That's a perfect example. By the time we get all done paying the interest on our ever higher rates and higher amounts of debt, we're not going to have the resources to invest in our future. We're essentially going to eat our own seed corn. And think about what that's going to mean for our security, for our competitiveness. We are, we are on a trajectory that is basically contradictory victory to long-term American national security. Yeah, we really are. Uh, you look at how we've been spending our money. 
And the fact that Donald Trump and, and Congress <clears throat> and I'll say Barack Obama and others had all the money to spend uh, on, on all the things they spent money on. We were spending $2 billion a week in Afghanistan uh, or, or a month for years and years. And the fact we finally get to infrastructure spending after these huge tax cuts and we don't have money to rebuild America, that's pathetic. Richard Haas, thank you so much. It's always great to have you. Heidi, thank you, thank you as well. And coming up, scandal at the White House. And that scandal continues to overshadow the business of running America with the chief of staff who was brought in to actually calm down the West Wing, now finding himself at the center of the storm and how long he'll last. Boy, that's nobody's guess. But from what I'm hearing, not very long. We're going to talk about it all next on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.